there is something we need It's a leap of faith Oh, if you have the will and the moment to spare It's a beautiful world out there It's a beautiful world out there Today we are exploring the fantastic ruins of Duffer's Castle. At the start of the 1100s, Moray was governed by Onegus, the Moramar or Earl of Moray. Onegus was a descendant of Macbeth and in 1130 led a rebellion against King David I of Scotland with the aim of getting more independence for Moray from the control of the Scottish crown. The rebellion was defeated and Onegus was killed but it brought home to David the fragility of his hold over Mori. He responded by granting estates in Mori to men he could trust, who, in return, were expected to maintain the king's peace. Many were immigrants of Anglo-Norman or Flemish origin, and one of these was Hugh de Freskin, a Flemish immigrant who already held estates in West Lothian, and who presumably had demonstrated his loyalty to David. Hugh de Freskin decided to secure his hold on his new estates in what was probably a fairly hostile part of the country by building a stronghold. The result was the first Duffus Castle, built sometime before 1150, in the year in which King David I stayed at the castle while arranging for the building of the nearby Kinloss Abbey. The Freskins first to castle adopted what at the time was a very common pattern of Mott and Bailey. On a low-lying site convenient for the coast and for Elgin, the Freskin oversaw the construction of a huge artificial mound, or Mott, surrounded by a ditch. On top of the Mott he constructed a timber keep, while the outer edge of the top of the Mott would have been protected by a wooden palisade. The Freskin's son, William, had the grant of Moray Estates, confirmed by King Malcolm IV in 1160. He responded by taking the family name de Moravia, which much later simply became Murray. In about 1270, the castle and estates passed by marriage to Sir Reginald Shen. In the Wars of Independence between Scotland and England, Shen was a supporter of Edward I of England and held the castle for him. It was attacked and destroyed by the Scots, led by Andrew Murray in 1297, during the campaign that culminated in the battle at Stirling Bridge. It was again captured by Robert the Bruce in 1307. In 1350, Duffus Castle changed hands once more, again by marriage. This time the new laird was Nicholas Sutherland, second son of the fourth Earl of Sutherland and a distant descendant of Freskin. The Sutherlands of Duffus would retain ownership of the castle for over 350 years until 1705. At some point in the 1300s, the wooden Mott and Bailey Castle was rebuilt in stone. It's not certain exactly when this happened. We do know that following the damage inflicted in 1297, the castle was being repaired in 1305 by Sir Reginald Chen, with the assistance of a grant from Edward I of 200 oak trees. We don't know whether Shen rebuilt the castle in stone, using the trees for flooring and roofing, or in wood, nor what state it was in when it was attacked in 1307. If Shen rebuilt it in wood, then it was probably Nicholas Sutherland who built the core of the stone castle you see today. Either way, by the late 1300s, the area of the Mott was largely occupied by a massive two-storey stone tower. In 1689, John Graham of Claverhouse, Viscount Dundee, was a dinner guest at James Sutherland, the second Lord Duffus, at Duffus Castle during the first Jacobite uprising, and shortly before Dundee's death at the Battle of Killiecrankie. On the death of the second Lord Duffus in 1705, 
the family decided that it would be more comfortable to live at their newly built Duffus house and the castle was abandoned. <laughs>